Imagine it's April, 1945. You are a Luftwaffe pilot, flying the Messerschmitt ME-262, the world's first operational jet. You are the future. You are flying at 540 miles per hour, leaving the old Allied propeller planes in your wake like they're standing still. You feel untouchable. But then, you look in your rearview mirror. A massive muscular silhouette is closing in. It has a giant gaping chin radiator and wings that look like they were sharpened by a blacksmith. It's not a jet, it's a propeller plane, and it's gaining on you. Before you can even push the throttle, four 20 millimeter cannons shred your wing to pieces. As you bail out, you realize the truth. Physics just lied to you. You've just been hunted by the Hawker Tempest. When people think of the Royal Air Force in World War II, they think of the Supermarine Spitfire. It's elegant, it's graceful, it's the darling of Britain. But while the Spitfire was posing for the cameras, there was a shadow warrior doing the heavy lifting. A machine built not for beauty, but for pure, unadulterated violence. This is the shocking truth about the Hawker Tempest, the illegal fighter that was so fast, it felt like cheating. Today, we're going into the shadows to see how this forgotten monster beat Germany's super weapons, when the world's favorite plane, the Spitfire, simply couldn't. By 1941, the legendary hurricane was showing its age. It was a hero in 1940, but the war was evolving into a game of high-speed survival. The RAF didn't need a knight, they needed a brawler. Sidney Cam, the lead designer at Hawker, decided to break the rules. He took the Napier Sabre engine, a 24-cylinder beast that produced over 2,000 horsepower, and tried to shove it into an airframe. The first attempt was the Typhoon. It was fast, but it was a nightmare. It leaked gas into the cockpit, its tail fell off in mid-air, and it couldn't breathe at high altitudes. But Cam didn't give up. He cheated the design. He created a revolutionary thin wing, modeled after the laws of high-speed physics that the Allies were only beginning to understand. He moved the fuel tanks, stretched the fuselage, and created the Tempest. It was no longer an airplane. It was a 2,200 horsepower engine with a seat and four cannons attached. The Tempest's first true test wasn't against other pilots. It was against a super weapon. In 1944, Hitler unleashed the V-1 flying bomb. These were pulse jets, the first cruise missiles. They screamed across the English Channel at 400 miles per hour, too fast for almost any Allied fighter to catch, except for the Tempest. While Spitfire pilots watched helplessly as the V-1s zoomed past toward London, Tempest pilots were diving from the clouds. The Tempest was so stable at high speeds that pilots developed a suicidal tactic. They would fly alongside the V-1, put their wingtip under the missile's wing, and flick it over, crashing it into the fields below. Between June and September 1944, Tempest squadrons destroyed over 600 V-1s. They were the thin line between life and death for thousands of civilians. They were the only machines fast enough to hunt the doodlebug missiles in the low-altitude kill zone. But the Tempest's greatest achievement, the outlier that makes it a legend, was its war against the German jets. As 1945 approached, the Luftwaffe deployed wonder weapons, like the ME-262 and the HE-162 Spats. On paper, these jets should have ended the age of propeller planes, but the Tempest pilots found a glitch in the system. Jets are fast, but they take a long time to accelerate. The Tempest, with its massive torque and high-speed wing, could pounce like a leopard. They began a tactic called rat catching. They would loiter near German airfields, waiting for the jets to be at their most vulnerable during takeoff and landing. On April 19, 1945, a Tempest scored the world's first kill against an HE-162 jet. The message was clear. It didn't matter if you had a turbine. If a Tempest was on your tail, you were already dead. With a staggering 8 to 1 kill ratio, the Tempest wasn't just surviving the jet age, it was dominating it. So, if the Tempest was faster, tougher, and more successful against jets than the Spitfire, why is it forgotten? It comes down to timing and image. The Spitfire was the hero of 1940, when Britain was alone. The Tempest was the conqueror of 1945, 
when the war was already being won. The Spitfire looked like a poet. The Tempest looked like a prize fighter in work clothes. Veterans who flew both will tell you the truth. The Spitfire was a dream to fly, but the Tempest was a machine you used to win a war. It was the ultimate evolution of the piston engine fighter. It was the end of the line, the absolute peak of what a propeller could do before the world turned to fire and turbines. The Hawker Tempest proved that you don't always need the newest technology to win. You just need the right tool for the job. It stood in the shadows of the Spitfire, but it hunted in the light of the German jets. What do you think? If you were a pilot in 1945, would you choose the elegance of the Spitfire or the raw, cheating power of the Tempest? Let me know in the comments, I read every single one. If you want to see more forbidden history about the machines that actually won the war, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Don't let the pretty history books lie to you sometimes. The real heroes are the ones hiding in the smoke. Until next time, keep your eyes on the skies.